at um, <clears throat> groups experiencing health inequities. So within the syllabus, it's specified that, okay, firstly, let's look at the groups experiencing health inequities that are listed in the syllabus. So we've obviously got ATSI peoples, we have socioeconomically disadvantaged people, people living in rural and remote areas, overseas born people, the elderly and people with disabilities. Now, your, your job here is to research and analyse Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples and one other group that's experiencing health inequities. So, we do that by investigating the nature and extent of the health inequities, um, the social, cultural, socioeconomic and environmental determinants, and also the roles of individuals, communities and governments in addressing the health inequities. So, today, you will be looking at Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples, and then it's your job to either research one um if you haven't you know done it yet or if you've already done it to revise the other one the other group that you've looked at okay so let's look at nature and extent first um ATSI people so firstly nature they have lower life expectancy um by an average of 10 years they have higher mortality rates they have higher levels of cancer more they're more likely to describe their health as poor ATSI make um ATSI peoples make up 3% of Australia's population but 20 28% of the prison population overall um Aboriginal and Torres Strait peoples have an extensive health gap now tips here look at the Australian Bureau of Statistics for more specific stats for multiple choice. So in multiple choice, um, you're likely to encounter like more specific stats in terms of, you know, let's say questions like um, which cancer has the highest mortality, mortality rates or what is the life expectancy gap between um, female uh, non-ATSI peoples and female ATSI peoples. Um, so questions like those where it's more specific now remember nature you are describing what the health um for instance in this case we're describing the health inequities that they're facing and then in extent we are going to um and then we, we're giving trends we're talking about the trends that they have higher mortality rates higher levels of cancer those are that is the extent of the um extent of the health inequity that they're experiencing tip here is that you don't want to get bogged down by um the statistics especially for short answer questions so being specific really um and knowing specific statistics is <clears throat> is going to be like the most important multiple choice again there you don't have to know too many just having a general understanding and knowing your main statistics um is going to be important for the multiple choice but in your short answer questions if you just describe the trend like higher lower increasing decreasing that's that's literally all you need for um your short answer questions and obviously long answer responses too. You can choose to go in a bit more detail, but that would be fine. Now, the determinants. We're specifically looking at social, cultural, socioeconomic and environmental. So, <clears throat> social, cultural, they have higher rates of domestic violence. Some adults associate with a clan, which can impart language barriers um, and have suffered years of unjust oppression, which has led to distrust of healthcare services. Socioeconomic, they are within the lower income bracket. They have lower health um, literacy, which results in an, incre in a, in increased participation in risky behaviours like smoking. Um, they have lower rates of finishing high school, which contributes to lower health literacy. And lower employment rates, which, is a res which equals to lower income, and also results in um, having like a lack of which also results in them being not able to afford um, as many services, you know, health services, for instance, like gym memberships or, you know, choosing or having the option to buy like organic foods and healthier foods. Finally, we've got environmental consequences. So environmental determinants, sorry. So we're looking at the fact that they're more than likely live in rural areas, which means there is a decreased access to services that only people available, um, that, that is only available to people living in urban areas. Some are homeless. So sometimes health forms need an address for processing. And so without an address, they're able to receive those certain services. <clears throat> Okay, now let's have a look at the roles of individuals, communities and governments. So individuals, of course, are responsible for their own health. You know, they are responsible um, for accessing information 
for leading healthy lifestyles and also participating in the health promotion um, that is initiated by the governments or NGOs or health promotions that is available to them. Communities, communities, elders um, and leaders are involved in close the close the gap programs. So specifically, um, you can look at AIM, which is tutoring and education for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders to address education inequities. Finally, governments are responsible for creating policy for um, you know, for providing funding to different programs um, that look at health promotion and also for research. So let's have a look at the Remote Aboriginal Swimming Pools project. So this exemplifies an intersectoral approach. So this is now about individuals, communities and governments working together. So government, So this is a program in which it's like you are able to access swimming pools. The swimming pools are based on your attendance. So firstly, um, the government, the Western Australian government provides funding for this initiative community so pools are run and managed by the royal safe saving society and sorry the royal life saving society and finally individuals engage with the program leading to positive health outcomes and in one school retention rates rose from 20 to 80 percent and adolescent crime rates in the in some communities went to zero so you can see here that when we have an intersectoral approach we're able to achieve more um and you know i won't say close the health gap because that's not you know that is obviously going to happen at a bigger bigger scale but it's about health promotion it's about you know closing smaller gaps to get to that big gap okay now that's done what we did there for um aboriginal and Torres Strait islander peoples you need to do that for another group experiencing health inequity so do the same thing go through the nature the extent the you know the determinants and then the role of the roles of individuals communities and governments the role would stay same like you know individuals um individuals actually using those resources communities providing those resources governments you know doing the funding and everything that's sort of going to remain the same but based on the um, group that we're talking about you know you'll be giving specific examples okay now looking at cardiovascular disease the nature so with this top point we are looking at high levels of preventable chronic disease injury and mental health problems you are to research and analyze cardiovascular disease cancer and one other condition uh, listed by investigating the nature of the problem, the extent of the problem. So here you have to give trends. See, it doesn't say statistics, it says trends. So you don't have to get too bogged down by the statistics. Um, risk factors and protective factors and the social, cultural, socioeconomic and environmental determinants. And also we need to talk about the groups at risks. Um, so at risk. So now same thing we're going to do for this job plan we'll go through cvd and cancer and then if you haven't already you can go ahead and research one of these other conditions and do the same thing um based on these dot points so let's have a look again if you've got any questions about any of this i know content wise it's a lot but breaking it down dot point by dot point can help you know to like simplify it rather than looking at it as like a one big whole, um, you know, like a one big whole syllabus thing. Just break it down and break it down into those little dot points, and you know, in terms of what you have to remember, remember for each. Like for the first one, you need to know about epidemiology, what it is, you know, what it measures, what it doesn't measure. With the second one, we're looking at the um, how we identify those health issues. We're looking at social justice principles, priority populations, prevalence of condition. Then we're looking at groups that actually experience the health inequities. And finally, now we're looking at the um, uh, at, at the level of preventable diseases and how you know those are like high levels of preventable chronic diseases that are preventable, but they have like high mortality rates. Okay, so now let's have a look at cardiovascular disease. So the nature of it. So cardiovascular disease encapsulates conditions and diseases of the heart and peripheral blood vessels so it's not one disease um it's like an umbrella term for a couple of diseases which relate to the heart and the peripheral blood vessels so firstly the coron uh, coronary heart disease it's ischemic um heart disease a disease of the blood vessels 
that supply the heart whereby blood supply and thus oxygen supply is cut off so it includes angina which is chronic temporary short episodes of chest pain and heart attack where blood vessels supplying the uh, blood vessels supplying blood to the heart they suddenly get blocked peripheral vascular disease that affects blood vessels in the limbs um ei to arteriosclerosis so we've got arteriosclerosis and arteriosclerosis remember those um heart failure heart is unable to maintain a strong enough blood flow and that can result in chronic tiredness reducing capacity for physical activity and shortness of breath he um we've got arteriosclerosis which is the main cause of cbd where there's a buildup of plaque on the inside of those vessels it is a gradual process and if it ruptures forms a clot which can block blood supply and cause heart attack so next we've got cerebrovascular disease which is stroke so disease of the arteries in the brain which is caused by arteriosclerotic clots so there's the interruption of blood supply to the brain for example uh, and that equals to stroke also occurs as a result of the blood vessels bursting in the brain so with each one you kind of want to know what it is how it happens um that's literally all you need to know what it is how it happens you don't have to go into a lot of detail okay now here it is um let's have a look so this is a cross section of a healthy artery there's a t in the artery wall um so remember here in the artery wall so with that we're looking at so there's oh my goodness the image so there's a tear in the artery wall the fatty material is deposited on the vessel wall so we talk about the um you know the buildup of fatty material with heart failure as well where there's that buildup of plaque on the inside of the vessels um so arteriosclerosis um and also you know how that causes the um disease of the arteries in the brain which is caused by arteriosclerotic clots and we also have narrowed arteries they become blocked by blood clots so all of this can um as you can see can happen and can obviously lead to cardiovascular disease okay now the extent of cardiovascular disease again you want to know the trends um but for like your multiple choice questions this can come in very handy knowing specific stats so one in five australians suffer from cvd it accounts for the second largest burden of disease so remember burden of disease um is the the cost of the disease um that that affects both you know individuals and obviously governments um the rates of, sorry the rate of strokes has fallen by 25 percent in the last 10 years so you know if you if you use this in an example you only need to say rates of strokes have uh, sorry of stroke has decreased you don't have to you know go into the full depth um this level again of detail is only needed in multiple choice so coronary heart disease specifically um the prevalence is increasing the rates increase with age um it uh, males are twice as more likely to have it um and death rates the and death rate decreasing due to improved medical technology now the determinants how do now obviously we have looked at the what the problem is we've looked at its nature now it's about looking at you know what is causing it what within you know what what's like the um the sort of the reason behind it. now not looking at numbers but we're looking at people and habits so let's have a look at socioeconomic um determinants so higher levels of education of course means awareness of determinants of risky behavior sorry detriments of risky behaviors and thus you know those people are less likely to develop cvd uh, a cvd a cardiovascular disease lower income um equates to lower health outcomes so you know the social gradient as the accessibility is lower and education is also generally lower now remember these are generalizations but you know and and we're based but these generalizations are of course based on statistics but they're still general generalizations um and finally inability to afford fresh um fruits and vegetables again um if you've got less money you know you'll focus on buying more food with less money um so sometimes buying fresh fruits and vegetables may not be an option versus buying a lot more groceries that you know like more carbs buying junk food that's going to last you longer um social cultural groups so so sorry social cultural determinants so growing up in a family who can smoke can um obviously lead to 
you know you sort of having that habit as well and that in turn can um and that in turn can link back to cbd specifically because it's a risk factor we'll look at risk factors in a second but smoking is a risk risk factor for cbd um there's obviously peer pressure to smoke and you know it's easy to eat poorly in a world of technology where junk food is kind of glorified and tv ads and everything um it is you know easy to eat poorly and men more likely are to ignore symptoms um environmental determinants so the impact of those well people living in rural areas have high mortality rates of cbd due to slower speed of accessing um immediate medical attention Finally, less access to overall services as well. Okay, now, risk factors and groups of risk. So let's have a look at risk factors. Um, they're sort of grouped according to modifiable risk factors, non-modifiable, and protective factors. So modifiable risk factors, factors that you can change in your lifestyle in order to um, be less susceptible to cardiovascular diseases. So we look at smoking, um, you know, diet with high salt and and fat, um, being overweight, sed uh, sedentary lifestyle, and hypertension, so high blood pressure. So all of these things can be changed, like, you know, quitting smoking, having a healthier diet, um, exercising regularly, and, um, and exercising regularly can sort of help all three here. Then non-modifiable risk factors, so looking at age, um, hereditary, and gender, those are non-modifiable, we can't do much about that. Um, and protective factors, so they're the opposite of modifiable risk factors. So they kind of go like complement each other very well. If you are in a question asked to talk about risk factors and protective factors, you talk about risk factors and then you say on the other hand, these are protective factors, so you know they're very complementary. So like having a healthy diet which is low in salt and fat, regularly exercising, no, not smoking or quitting smoking and managing stress. Now, groups at risks. We've got specific groups at risk, so um, they include smokers, those who are overweight or obese, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders, um, people with high blood pressure and high cholesterol, males, the elderly, and socioeconomic.